Before we get into the actual content, what are some of the tools you think are super important, you know, if somebody wants to get into vlogging as well? I mean, the basics, you know? The basics. I think a lot of people overthink the tools that they need when it comes to vlogging, which is totally normal because I overthunk. Overthunk. It. I overthunk it. <laughs> um, but the truth is, you just need a recording device. Like honestly, right now I'm making like a long, a long haul vlog. So it's a vlog over a couple of months, and I got super tamad to bring around my camera. So what I'm doing now is vlogging through my phone. And the thing is, with technology now, it's super like it's really good quality, even just on your phone. So I feel like with if you want to start vlogging with anything in terms of your tools, your equipment, even your content, I think it's just really important to not overthink it and just do it because you'll never run out of reasons or excuses to not do it, um, but you will run out of time. So I think it's very important not to overthink. There you go. You started 2013. How old were you when you posted your first video? Actually, I opened, I started, I made my YouTube channel in 2013, but I started posting in 2015. Okay. So there was uh, two years of hesitation. Like That's why love. it's coming for, from somewhere when I'm saying, don't overthink and don't hesitate. <laughs> hesitate. You can listen to my single on Spotify. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a lot of hesitation there for two years. Can you believe? Um, but yeah, I was 15 years old in 2015. And, you know, that creative process that you go through when you posted your first video, a lot of people experience fear and they're afraid of what people are going to think. Oh, even not even just people they don't know, but their friends, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, who does maybe they have that mindset that oh, see, see, no, but she's not going to vlog. So what was that kind of break? What was that shift for you? You're just after the two years, I'm going to do this. Like, what were you thinking and what how do you, you know, help them create good content and creative content? I don't know what I was. <laughs> <laughs> Go lang. Oh, what was I thinking at 15? No, actually, it was. Um, I really loved watching mm -hmm. YouTubers from other countries. Yes. Um, I really loved, at that time, Zoella. I really loved Bethany Mota. Mm. Who did you guys watch? Um, who else was like super big then? I don't know. Um, I, I still watch Alicia Marie until yes. today. Um, so I would watch them and I would think like, oh, I wish that there was somebody like this here in the Philippines. And there, there were makeup gurus there mm -hmm. like Sinate Michelle, uh, yeah. Michelle D, um, Saiti Yoko. I would watch them like super. But the thing is, I wanted somebody my age. Yes. And there wasn't anybody like that yet. And so... I think that is what set it apart for me is because I started doing it because I wanted to watch that content. Mm. So instead of, you know, wanting to do it for other people, it really became, I wanted to do it for me because it was somebody that, I think I wanted to become somebody that I would watch, if that makes yes. sense. Like I became my target audience, mm -hmm. which I was just talking about in um, the back with um, some of the Cosmo. <laughs> some of the Cosmo people because I think before you can create for other people you have to create for yourself and you have to love your own content because if you don't love your content how do you expect other people to love your content and so it started with me wanting to do it for myself and then after that it just grew what do you suggest? Do you suggest after you edit, you really watch it and go, you know, of course you have to edit and really make sure it's ready for, you know, but some people like to, as we said, overthink and watch it. Over. Are you the type what after you think that it's good, you're like, okay, I'm going to post this and then bahala na. Is that yes, something? Yes, that's me. I watch my video videos as little as I oh, can. Oh, really? Okay. Like once they're posted, I have amnesia and I've forgotten everything that happened in the video because I hate watching myself. Okay. Like my, I, can't, I can't hear my voice. Um, but I edit it and then... Um, yeah, I, I run it. I run through it. Like, how is it? I oh, now we're going getting technical. So I basically I rough cut the video, mm -hmm. and then I do another sweep with music and all of like the cropping and the the zoom ins, yes. and then I do another run with for for text. Yes, and sound effects. Then after that. I don't watch it anymore. anymore. It's so out. it's really just the editing process. And yes. then when it's out, okay, it's for everybody else yeah. to enjoy. I yeah. love it. But, you know, we, we, you're, very, you're very, very young. And you, you say I, that like you're so yes. much older than me. You're not. I, I am a little older than you. No, but it, it's so inspiring to start something at 15 and keep doing it. But 
as we do know, this is a topic that is, you know, constantly being discussed. Social media can be unhealthy at times. So when there are, how do you manage that? And how do you make sure that you, even somebody that works on social media is doing the right kind of amount of time on it? And how do you handle maybe not burning out from doing something like this? That is a big question. Kaya, kaya okay. <laughs> so, um, I... I think it's I think we see it all the time but taking social media breaks is really the healthiest thing that you can do even for a social media influencer mm -hmm. because for the first few years I was on social media I never took social media breaks ever because I thought this is my job I don't yeah. you know I I can't do this um but you I don't know, I've never regretted putting down my phone or I've mm. never regretted not vlogging this day. I've never regretted taking a break for about for a week um, because it's just really healthy for your soul, I feel like. there's. It's not that social media is evil. Like, yes. I always tell people, I'm like, y'all, you're, like, kind of overreacting. It's not yeah. a bad thing. Because it's fun, you know? Yeah, no, I feel like it's a platform and there are just different people who step onto the platform with different intentions and we come across them every day so sometimes we come up with very you know aggressive violent yes. you know tweets yes. but sometimes we come through like we come across very funny ones um, but either or I feel like we still have to take a break from all of the distractions mm. and just um, like over uh, stimulations um, so I think taking breaks is really really good and I actually took a hiatus <laughs> You did. Oh. I did. Um, so for a social media influencer, my whole life is basically online. If you want to know what my mom's name is, if you want to know what my dog's name is, probably where I live. Mm. You could get a good idea of where yeah. I live. Yeah. Um, on, Especially on, if you're familiar with the area. Yeah, yeah. if you're familiar with the area. Um, so you could basically know a lot about me from my social media. And so living with that pressure that everybody knows everything about me, it kind of got to me after a few years. And so I had to take a break. And it was like one of the best um, ideas that I've ever had. Yeah, and I think that also like was good for you to create other things. And exactly. you had to take a pause. So that it's wonderful that they can hear that from you, that it's okay to put your phone down. Yeah. Especially that it is your job. No, I I encourage people to put their phones down. Like it's something that I advocate for now. Like I'm the type of person that if you check my screen time, it's probably under an hour now on my wow, phone. Wow, that's crazy. Yes. So I I try. That's why I bring paper like paper books now, and I just try to read as much as possible. Like if I'm seated for more than five minutes, then I tell myself you have to read. You have to stop on social media. Mm, that's a good reminder. But okay. While we keep that in mind, there are a lot of women here that want to start vlogging and need some advice. And what, who else can give it than you? So is there anything that you, know, you want to tell them for the ones that are starting out? Content creators. Content creators who want to start. Um, I think the three most important things that you could have when you start, it's very cliche, but this is what I live by, truly. It's passion, um, purpose, and perseverance. And I feel like because when you're doing your passion, it's something that is very personal to you, and it's something that you can take ownership of. And I feel like when you take ownership of something, then you want to take care of it, you want to nurture it, you want to do everything in your power to you know, protect it. And I feel like when you put out your passions, then or when you put out your passions and you become passionate about that thing, then, you know, there's just love that will come out from that platform. And the second thing is um, obviously purpose. And it's to do what you're doing for reasons beyond you. And I know I said that um, it's because we... We, we have to start creating for ourselves first, and that's great. Um, but after we learn to create for ourselves, we have to think and create selflessly as well. Um, we have to think of our... I always say that we think of our social media not as a pedestal but as a platform and I feel like when you think of your social media as a pedestal it's you know you want the um, likes yeah you want yeah. the likes for you you need the money you yeah. need the you know you need the cloud to be known yeah. you need to be known all of these things for you but when it becomes a platform it becomes for other people to encourage other people to inspire other people to empower other people and on a pedestal you would have regrets and I've seen it so many times with people that I will not name. <laughs> yes, we're not doing that today. 
uh, the, the tea is hot, but not today. Um, and then, but for a platform, there are no regrets for being selfless. I've never regretted being too kind to somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then the last one is definitely perseverance because it took me an entire year to reach 5,000 subscribers. Um, so imagine, and it took me six months to reach 500 subscribers. So it's, it, I like to think about it sometimes because what if I stopped vlogging at six months with 500 subscribers? I was posting three videos a week. Wow. And yeah, I was 15 years old. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of editing time. A lot. No, but I... I'm coming back to yeah, you Yeah, I know. Like, oh, I'm having flashbacks <laughs> now. Um, but I... I Mikey Busa said this in a fan fest. He's like, success has a funny way of showing up right before you're about to give up. And for me, there were so many times that I wanted to, but if I had given up at the six-month point at 500, 000, uh, 500 subscribers, then I would have never reached 500,000 subscribers. And, you know, it, and it escalated from there. So I feel like perseverance is very cliche, and you see it on Pinterest a lot. Like, I, I, I mock all of my friends, like, wow, you're such a Pinterest, Pinterest board. board. Yeah. <laughs> you're such an inter- uh, inspiring Pinterest board right now. Um, but I feel like perseverance is one of the most important things that you can have because... In a world that is so instant and you just, it's like, it's a world of instant gratification. Perseverance is so underrated, but I feel like it is one of the most important things you can have now. And it really does take time. I think yes. people, as you said, it's so it's so instant, but every story, really, there's timing for all of that. For sure. Everybody's story is different. So, Janina, I, I, I want to ask you so many other questions, but of course, there are lucky fans that are going to be able to meet you and take photos with you. So, let's give her a round of applause. Yay. Isn't she just like a bright energy of light? Oh, thank you. I'm actually sick today, so that means oh, a lot. And, and the <laughs> pink hair, we love it. So, thank Thanks. you so much, Janina.